So we're heading off now to Malahide Castle. So join us. Hello, good morning. We're going to Malahide Castle. So that's um, on the northern side of Dublin. So when you're coming from Dublin, it's around 30 minutes to go there by car. And if you're coming from airport, it's like only 10 minutes. And by that, you can use the train, a taxi, the or the bus. So come on and join us. I have my daughter and her boyfriend with us. So enjoy. Malahide Castle as you can see to my left there that's the Malahide Castle okay we're going now come on and join us starting to walk towards the castle here and it's been a fine day so this castle has like 270 acres so it's a big one see that uh, I'm starting to do a lot of castles lately because someone just requested that I go to castles here in Ireland. And you know there's as well a story here in this castle that it's a little bit haunted. Like you know the owner Mr. Talbot or Sir Talbot as they call it went to war in the 12th century and so the wife was left in that castle and then he got killed in the war so now they're saying that his soul or his ghost is uh, roaming around the castle because he loved the wife so much that maybe of course he's so attached to the castle itself and the wife so it's really sad but do you believe in ghosts? That's my question. Well, for myself, I do because I have so much experiences of ghosts haunting me. Now, here are my travel companions. Say hello, Chandel and Patricia. Mabuhay! <laughs> <laughs> if you want to follow their Instagram, the Instagram page, um, I will um, write it down there at the bottom of the screen later, okay? <laughs> so look at the two of them now. They're just doing pictorials. <laughs> That's why they, they agreed to join me because of the pictorials and the selfies. Behind me is the Malahide Castle. 
it's built in the 12th century and it was a fortress and then converted into a manor a house for Sir Talbot it's been a tourist attraction because it was made into a museum join me as I enter the Talbot castle video inside the castle so what can I do so um, we might just go to another place that will allow us to take videos inside and before I go this place is really very creepy when I learned about the, the white lady that was being seen here and the story of Sir Talbot we go now to the next castle. Here's the thing that's why they don't want to tell me where we're going next because we're going to buy this and they know they know that I don't want it but what else can I do I'm thirsty but there's no healthy option there just a shake and that's how many calories now my god bye bye <laughs> bye bye again diet let's go to the next castle
to Arjilan Demesne. How do you pronounce that, Chandel? The main. The main. The main. The Arjilan the main. The miss. The miss. Ne. Ne. It's the castle. The background is a view of the Atlantic Ocean. Is it Atlantic Ocean? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Look, there's a Christmas tree. <laughs> I hope we can go inside and take videos inside. Not unlike the Malahide Castle, they did not allow me to take video. So that's why I did not go in already because what's the point i cannot show you what's inside so maybe let's hope and wish that they will allow us here so i still have to um know all about the history of this castle because uh, they did not tell me that we're going to another one so this is so what do you call this castle again Come on. Argillian. <laughs> Argillian. Argillian Castle. Entering the billiard room, and this is where the first Taylor lived. Robert Taylor was a Church of Ireland clergyman and a bachelor who wanted to build himself a home where he could retire. In 1737, he purchased the site in a townland town called Argillian, and in 1738, built himself a simple square house, a two-story house over the basement. It was called the Prospect, perhaps because of the lovely views down the sea and beyond to the Cooley Mountains. So maybe these are all his things. Old things. There. The fireplace of the billiard home, hall. There's the name of Robert Taylor. Robertus Taylor, 1738. So the next one here is the main hall. So this is a typical Victorian style. You know, these Victorians love to impress their visitors. Items of armor to indicate the family had connections with the army, so they display them. And then there's a sample of stuffed animals as well. There's an eagle or a hawk, I don't know. There's a bear. So this is a stuffed bear. Here's a bigger one. Oh, scary. Imagine. Imagine. Look at 
how big it is now. Look at that. to the stairs here and straight ahead there there's a room a bedroom look at that and a cot a typical bed and a chest where you put your clothes it's the same in the Philippines, you know, the cabinets, these cabinets or wardrobes, they call it here, it's the same. Prepare the food for their masters. So there's a big oven there and a smaller oven. There. And this is where they wash their dishes, pots and pans. well-bred and educated traits she needed for her role. Staffing was under her domain with the hiring of staff, a role in which she would take great pride. The housekeeper was head of the household after the mistress of the house, placing in her a position of great authority. So next in line was the cook, a downstairs role that was held in great esteem by those upstairs. The role of the cook was influential as she would liaise with the lady of the house about menus, especially when there were guests. In Victorian times, there was a tradition of employing cooks from abroad with the height of fashion being to have a French 
cook. So those are a picture of um, the helpers. That's the inside of this um, castle. Um, there's as well a cafeteria here where if, when you get tired you can just go and and eat. Well, the upstairs are, are not allowed for self-tours. So, there. waiting for Patricia and Chandel to come back because I'm the only one who went inside the castle it's so nice here it's so peaceful nice to come down here and you know think about things or just just to meditate or something just to be able to have a peace and quietness it's always been a hard time when you're so busy and you need them you need a day of rest and just do nothing go to a beautiful place like this look around enjoy the weather supposedly we'll have a hurricane tomorrow arriving here in Ireland so uh, they took advantage of the weather right now because the sun is up. <laughs> 